call the Mountain View City Council meeting to order. If we could do roll call, please. Jerry Wonders? Here. Lisa Keel? Present. Susan Newhoff? We'll be back shortly. Robert Hires? Here. Laura McGuire? Here. Paul Schultz? Here. Mayor Loma? Here. Invite the audience to stand and join in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have been given an agenda. Is there any corrections or additions to the agenda or a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? We have an agenda tonight. We're going to squeeze something in here. If one of the students would like to stand up, give their name and address. What class you're from? Um, I'm Connor McEwen, uh, 5250 South. 144th Avenue, Hesperia, Michigan, and I'm from a Mr. Brunson's first hour class. Okay, thank you. Again, if you have any questions as we go, kind of raise your hand and we'll try and answer your questions. Tonight's meeting is a work session, so it'll be a little bit different than a regular meeting, and we'll go right into the work session. Number five, Jeff. Okay. okay. 5A, uh, fiscal year 2022-23, year in review. Um, this was included in your packet. Basically what it is is the final review for current fiscal year with all the 13 different funds. I think the best way to look at it, and I think it, it kind of shows that there's still quite a bit that needs to happen within this last um, couple weeks even before we do the final adoption. So what I put on here is for each of the funds, the percent, where we are with percent revenue, so if it's um, over 100%, so we've collected additional revenue beyond what was first budgeted. For appropriations, so if you're below the 100%, you haven't fully spent all the appropriations. And then the fund balance itself. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about what that fund balance number is once we get into the budget. As you can see, for the most part, um, all of the revenues are getting close to 100%, if not over. Um, so those projections were uh, fairly good. Major Streets is a little bit off because we did some shuffling of funds. When we had additional funds that were necessary in the water fund to cover the lead and sewer um, service line replacement, we moved those funds from water, or we moved those funds from streets to water to help cover that shortfall. So what was originally budgeted for Major Streets has then been um, subsidizing the water fund which is why it's at 115.65% over. The fund balance itself, so remember with fund balance, this not only includes um, assets that the city has on the books, so if we have purchased, let's say, a uh, piece of equipment, so until that asset is depreciated, that value is carried on the books. So for water and sewer fund, those numbers are very large because that includes a lot of the pipe in the ground or water towers, et cetera. So that does not reflect essential cash value or what the city has in the bank for those different uh, funds. The health and pension fund, the fund balance on that is negative because we always kind of wait till the end of the year to make sure we balance that fund. So what we do throughout the year as employee contributions and city contributions are made into that fund and we pay those out to MERS to meet those obligations and then any additional obligations at the end of the year we balance that fund. So it's not that there is a true negative value, it's just because of where we are in the current fiscal year. The other two items to note on that is both the White Lake uh, building inspection um, fund, so that program or the authority is actually a different body controls what happens within that budget so that body is uh, the city of Montague, um, Montague Township and Whitehall Township. So those entities determine what happens with those funds. And then the same with the DDA, the Downtown Development Authority controls that budget. So DDA meets next week and we'll kind of review their final budget for the next fiscal year. Questions on year-end review? 
Otherwise, I'll just kind of keep moving through the different parts of five. So for the next fiscal year, the, the millage rate that's proposed, uh, this was your tax report request sheet. Um, millage that's requested for next year is 16.15. City's current millage is 16.4, so that would be a reduction of a quarter mil. Um, the sheet, what it shows you there is originally that the city had a charter of 20 mills that could go up to. And because of the Headley Amendment, that number continues to go down. So even though that number continues to decrease, we are still well below um, what they kind of call being headly. So they force you to reduce your millage. So we're below that. Um, so we have no reduction by the state, but staff is proposing a reduction from 16.4 to 16.15. So a quarter mill reduction. I'll move into the next part here. So this is moving on to 5C because I'll talk a little bit more about the millage. Um, a couple of the budget focus items for this year, obviously um, there's been a continued goal of reducing the millage incrementally as able. So this is a constant evaluation. This is much easier to do since we've met our pension obligations. We've met kind of those targets and we still have a significant uh, fund balance within general funds. So it makes it easy to look at other opportunities that the city can participate in. Um, so two of those being utilizing the fund balance to stabilize the cash flow for the current year as well as allowing for positioning of projects in the coming years. So this can be projects within general fund itself or it can be within the other funds. So that might be a water sewer, one of the street projects, etc. So, and specifically, utilizing the fund balance that the city has to initiate some of um, the parks subcommittee recommendations. So, some of these are brand new improvements, which are also rolling into some, kind of some deferred maintenance. So, an example is that uh, shoreline project at Maple Grove, Maple Beach, Swimming Beach, whatever you want to call it. Um, so, by having that extra reserve, then the city can start using those for those different park projects. And that uh, falls specifically within general funds, so that's not a separate fund. It's a department within general fund. And then obviously, uh, closely monitor fund balances and cash on hand. I'll talk a little bit about cash on hand in a second and how that helps us evaluate, rather than just looking at those fund balance numbers because, again, they include the assets, where we are for the not only upcoming year, but also how to plan for future years. As we talk about the millage itself, again, proposing 16.15 mills, this raises about $1.25 million. Again, this is a reduction of a quarter mill for the upcoming year. The city also has local community stabilization funds, uh, estimated approximately $550,000 for this next year. Um, this is a little bit hard to plan for, and we usually budget conservatively because it's paid in two parts. Um, so we're pretty much guaranteed the first part, we have that number solid, but the second part um, is pretty fluid, so we usually wait and burn that up as we kind of go forward. So our, this last fiscal year, um, our LCS was 496,000 that we received. So there is expected a uh, increase for this next year. And then the constitutional sales tax tips distribution of 221,000. Um, so those are the major revenue sources. If you looked at your draft budget, that whole first page one is all the estimated revenues coming in. Um, so not only those major funds, but also some miscellaneous revenue um, throughout the general fund. Questions so far? And this is the work session, so any questions at any time, otherwise I'll just keep it. Yep, and the of the millage, what, if you decrease it by 0.25, what does that amount to in dollars? It's about twenty to $25,000. Okay. This is going to be a little bit hard to see. I don't know that focusing is going to help just because it's smaller. 
Um, but this is the cash flow sheet, just to show you kind of how some of this works that we're looking at. So I commonly do this at least quarterly, if not more frequent, as especially as we get to the end of the year, is that we take an initial fund. So if we take, for example, the general fund, the cash balance, which we run, run as report, then we have to look at what we expect to expend the rest of this fiscal year, expend the next fiscal year, take in any of our other liabilities on obligations, if there's liability for pensions within that fund, and then we can get a true cash number. So having said that, even when we get that number, in some instances like major streets, we ha also have to then account for upcoming projects or if we have outstanding liabilities for projects that are closing. So we continue to kind of look at that number because it might be easy to say, well, we have $500,000 in this fund and we want to do this project this year, but we also have a project coming in the next two years that we've been saving up for. So that kind of goes into the planning as well when we look at these cash balances as well as the fund balance and the numbers that we put in here. Some other revenues that we see within the city, so these are outside of the general fund. Uh, we do expect some incremental increases for MDOT both street funds, so major streets expected at about 345000 and then local at $125,000. Um, the city has also received this next year an Eagle Grant, uh, Drinking Water Assessment Management Grant for 226000 I don't know if we'll get all the way through that project this year, but we're proposing revenue is received and we'll expend the full amount. So it's basically money in and money out for that assessment plan. Um, if we need to shuffle funds or we don't get all the way through it this next fiscal year, we'll split that out for the following fiscal year, so a year from, from now. Just to give you a feel for how things kind of spread within the city as far as general fund revenues. Um, so state revenue is about 33% that we receive. Um, local tax millage is just under half, so 47%. Um, and then all others, so this again is on that front page, gives you an idea, then all others, about 20% of that is our general fund revenue. The appropriations then breaks out. You can see for um, General government, so this is all operations, basically kind of city hall operations and things that fall into the kind of, kind of those general governmental activities is 19%. Uh, the police department itself, because all of that comes from the general fund, is 33%. And then some of these smaller ones, um, cemetery and parks, so cemetery five, parks 18%. Public um, services, 7%, other, other services, 3 debt service, 5%, um, transferred other funds, 10%. Um, so you can see the greatest portion is the police department itself, and I'll talk a little bit about how that breaks out as far as staffing. But that's because police department all comes from general fund, whereas other staff, Department of Public Works is spread through many funds, and even the City Hall staff have some different funds that are accessed, which the Police Department is fully within the general fund operations. As far as appropriations distributions, um, the top one here, operations and supplies, just under 30%. All of staffing, just under 40% at 39%. So this is all staff throughout the city. Uh, major projects and activities for the next fiscal year is about 25% of the budget, and pension and health care is 7%. So our pension and health care at one time was in the 20s, high 20s, of what we were designating for that. So you can see how we've been able to make uh, a lot of progress on that. Staffing appropriations across the different departments. So City Hall, about 30% of staffing appropriations. Uh, police Department and Public Works almost identical at 35%. Um, this also includes 4% uh, cost of living increase for all staff, so this mimics the union contract, so Police Department uh, negotiated a 4% increase, so 
that would be mimicked across all departments, all staff. This percentage also reflects uh, DPW has some additional seasonal part-time staff that uh, we provide to help um, kind of the shortfall for parks and cemeteries and some other activities. It also includes for the police department the school resource officer. Um, and again, this is a shared position. City covers that 20 to 25 percent for when that person comes back on patrol uh, during the summer months and then um, school covers the wages for the other year. And then lastly, retiring of our utility billing department clerk. So we will have some overlap in the current fiscal year and then that person will start um, in the next fiscal year full time. So questions on that? The last big thing that we're waiting for is our report from MERS. So this is the pension obligation. So the only thing we can use right now is looking at where we are. So this is from the 2021 report. So again, they finish up their calendar year, so 22 calendar year, and then it takes another six months before we actually get the report. Um, but as of this last report, we were at 96% funded. So you can see the trend here. We were as low as 69% and then making significant extra contributions, so at 96%. Um, this is also a little bit out of date because, I guess I'm just gonna have to keep focusing on the slide here. Um, so this is within the different divisions. Uh, over here, percent funded, so if you remember earlier this year, we balanced those um, each of those divisions so that they were all at least 80% funded. So that was that additional contribution as we were looking at those adoptions of the, the MERS program. So in the next report, that page will show 80% funded at least for all of those. Um, we do expect that the percent funded will go down a bit from this 96%. Um, our goal had always been 80 to 85 percent because then that allowed us to start moving some funds. Don't think it will get even close to that, but market did not perform as well last year as it did the previous year. General fund transfers to other funds. So again, because we do have a um, fairly good fund balance and some cash reserves, our goal is 25%, so that's been a stated goal of the council um, for at least 15, 20 years. So our current fiscal year fund balance would be 66.5%, so and that's a value of $1.65 million. And so that allows us to make some contributions, appropriations to other projects, other funds, so proposing for major streets, shifting 120000 to major streets that will help with the Wilcox Street project and the sidewalk project in that corridor. Uh, another 50,000 for local streets, so that's a little bit of a catch-up fund because local streets does not get as much funding from the state. We have a lot more local streets to kind of work on and allows us to do some chip and seal projects uh, in the next fiscal year. And then the launch ramp, 125,000, so this is for largely for the um, fish cleaning station upgrade and the big grinder at the fish cleaning station. So it lets us, again, maintain that general fund reserve of 25% and also maintain a million dollar fund reserve. In fact, it still is over that million dollar fund reserve. So this is all, again, with a reduction in the millage. So we can still do these activities. For the remaining part of this, I want to just hit on some appropriation highlights. Um, if we go through the different funds and you have a question on those um, funds, a line item, we can try to answer those questions as well. Um, so general appropriation highlights or general fund appropriation highlights. Um, again, the way to read to kind of read these account numbers. So the first number is the fund number and then the department number and then these are kind of activity numbers within there. So this first one being in the uh, actually city council budget. 
So the allocation of 1500 for sports and shorts, assuming the council wants to continue with that, and then automatically doing the $2,500 for the White Lake fireworks. So as part of that budget, then when those requests come in, then they can just be allocated. It doesn't have to be a continual ongoing approval process by the council. Um, the next item, $32,500 for both a zoning review and a recreational <coughs> plan. So this is under contract and this is coming out of the master plan update. So that work will be completed this fall at some point. The back end of that is the recreational plan so that we can apply for state funding for a lot of these parking <coughs> activity projects. And then also a zoning review so that this goes to make sure that the zoning meets the new master plan, meets our general ordinances. So um, McKenna would do that contract work as well. So they would go through that entire process with uh, staff and the planning commission. We still have the ADA assessment on there. Disability work, disability network is planning to do that. They're not sure if they'll hit this fiscal year or next. Um, so it's kind of floating right now. If they do it this fiscal year, we're it's budgeted. If not, we'll just bump it to the next fiscal year. So that's 6,200. Um, 101-262 is elections. So I mentioned this at a previous meeting. We do have an expectation that those costs will go up significantly because of the early voting requirements. So not only mailings, but also staffing that will be required because of the new early voting requirements. So you can see I've put in there what we commonly spend is about uh, $12,000, so we're going to expect that to be about double that. So $25,336 for the next fiscal year. Is that like overtime charges then? You said additional staffing? No, so that is for the election workers themselves because um, there has to be how many days beforehand? Yeah. So nine days of early voting. Um, which is going to be overseen by the county and all the municipalities in Muskegon County are going to kind of chip in to cover that expense. And it ends up being about $3,500 per election. So we estimated for the most amount of elections you could have in a year. Yeah, if the, if the county was not willing to do it, then we would have had to hold those uh, here at the city and the cost would have been even more expensive. So, like double at least. Yeah. Anything else? Okay. Um, so, school resource officer, again, this is about 20% of that cost, so estimated about $30,000 for that. So, that's not only the staffing cost, but anything that's kind of surrounding that position. So, additional equipment, uniforms, et cetera. So, about $30,000 to uh, supplement that position. Uh, 101 44970 um, City Tree Replacement Program. This is a little bit different from previous years because it's been scattered throughout a whole bunch of funds, but it's a little bit difficult to track because we do get different grants from Consumers Energy and DTE um, that we do tree planting through. Made more sense to pull all forward to the general fund so that as we get grant funds and we expend those funds, it's all in one location rather than 2,500 hitting streets, 2,500 for parks, et cetera. So we'll have a single line item um, for that in general fund this next year. Um, and then there is within the cemetery, that's still general fund, um, a cemetery chip and seal project for one portion of the street. And then there's been some work that we're looking at for the cemetery storage building. This is the block building that's right on Dowling, so we just had it power washed. There is some additional work that will need to be done on that. So between those two projects, it's about 10,000 for the chip and seal and about another four for just estimates for getting the other building taken care of. The other general fund appropriation highlights, um, we have a lot within um, parks. So some of this is wrapping up some engineering work. So Maple Grove, Rossler, or, and the Boat Launch Park, um, Column Field Parking, and the Dog Park. So all those projects bundled together about $50,000 in appropriations for ongoing engineering permit work, et cetera. 
that includes, if you look at the next line item, the actual project itself. Um, so engineering and um, permit work for that project is up here, but then the actual shoreline project is 274375 Again, this is not for the entire park project. This is just for the shoreline. So if you essentially drew a line kind of across this area here, repair that walkway due to dredging or all of the debris that's in the water, docks, uh, sidewalk, seawall, and some of the plantings. So there's that 274, 375. Once the city starts moving towards the upland portion, that's another $370,000 approximately. Large percentage of that being for the new playground that has to go in there. So it no longer, no longer meets specifications. But not this next fiscal year, so we're just worried about the shoreline right now. Also, the Hart Montague Trail resurfacing. So, the city's obligation for the match on that project is 43145 So, that would allow us to move forward with that project, which would happen this fall at some point. And then the last item, uh, 101901 about 35,000 for both the city sign landscaping project. So we have the new digital sign to peel out some of the asphalt there and do the landscaping around that sign itself, as well as landscaping around city hall. If you've noticed, we've kind of been slowly doing landscape projects near the wall, down the street. So now we're gonna kind of focus on um, the area around city hall. So all of those areas will kind of match in landscaping design components. Questions on general fund highlights? Yeah. The question, um, when the social district is, when they're getting that ready, where does that come from? So we'll come two parts. So a lot of the amenities are going to um, be covered by DBA, so the actual tables, things like that. Um, the city's obligation is more for the enforcement part of it. So it's a fairly small component. Let me see if I can find the line item. So it would be the signage, the painting of the lines on the sidewalk. Uh, landscape. landscape would be all through DBA, so that's kind of an improvement. Great. Great. So the park subcommittee looked at the lot that's behind where the parking lot currently is. Um, so this is to begin the first phase of that to get the engineering work done. So they actually do the design components for both parking lot and the dog park, and then it would kind of move, move towards the approval of the actual plan. Okay. So that's it's going to be, the, uh, we're talking the south side of the um, bike trail. Yes. Um, west of the parking lot. Yes. And yep. the proposal is to fence that? Or is that true? Yes. How big is it going to be? We don't know yet. Um, what's the, what's the so that's part of the design process. <laughs> what's the potential? How much area is there back there? It says 1.3 acres that's back there. So I don't know if this is going to help much. So column field here, parking lot, that triangle lot um, kind of behind it. Jeff, will those be engineered separately, the, the parking and then the dog park separately? So like if 
the council agrees, yeah, we need the parking, but not necessarily the dog park, or is that all going to be just one? I hope it's all one, because then we can apply for state funds for an entire project. If they're broken apart, then the state is unlikely to fund either one. So What's the, what's the percentage of that the state would help fund that? Uh, depends, depends on the, the grant component, so it could be an 80-20, or it could be a 50-50. Um, so that's, they're trying to actually utilize some of the spark funds from the state um, for this project. So it could benefit us to include the dog park, is it? Yes. Kind of what I'm hearing? Yep. Okay. That was kind of our best recommendation too. Thank you. Anything else on general fund? I had one other question. Yep. We've talked several times about um, signs for parking. Yes. In in our city now, did, would that come strictly out of DDA, or would that come more out of like a general fund type of That's, account? That would come through DDA because those are the antennas, those kind of wayfinding signs for parking in the downtown. Okay. So through the DDA, um, if it's a general street sign, then that comes out of depending if it's a major or local street. So let's talk about street funds. Um, so several projects going on um, in the next fiscal year. So a couple tip and seal projects, both in major and local. Um, so the first section here, 202 are all major streets. So looking at one project, so tip and seal project on Cook Street, so Hancock to Old Channel Trail. A lot of people might say, well, that one was recently paved or, you know, within the last decade. But part of the idea with chip and seal is you put on that protective layer to protect the street, extend the life if you let it go too far, and then, it, then the chip and seal doesn't do as well. So looking at Cook Street, again, Hancock to Old Channel, about uh, $50,500, so $51,000. Also within major streets, um, the sidewalk, Subcommittee's been talking about Old Channel Trail pedestrian bridge, and we've been working on engineering and permits in the current fiscal year. Some of that's going to roll over once the actual project gets moving forward, so that includes the actual bridge replacement with a sidewalk instead of a bridge, because the number to replace it as a bridge was well out of our realm of uh, replacement. So extending the culvert. Uh, putting some fill on there, re-sloping, and putting a sidewalk with the ultimate idea of putting kind of a bump-out platform there to mimic that feel of a kind of seating bridge area. I think I've got a concept in here in just a minute. Uh, the Wilcox Street construction project, uh, city's obligation for next fiscal year about $84,000. Again, this is a matching project. The overall project is 309, so state. Um, paying for the remaining of that 80-20, the that number is more than 20% because we pay a greater percentage of the engineering on when that engineering took place compared to the project activities. And then also the sidewalk project, so these are not going to run concurrent, but the street project ends, that kind of gets wrapped up with the state, and then the sidewalk project um, happens after that. So that's major streets. And then for local streets, chip and seal, um, we kind of pick these neighborhood areas to do chip and seal projects. Um, kind of right now, right now we're looking at the following areas there, Brookwood, Grant, Mason, Pinebrook, Stanton, and Pauline, so small sections of those, about $35,000. Um, to give you an idea kind of where those hit. So green here is for the local chip and seal projects. Um, I was proposed right now. This is the major chip and seal on Cook Street. Here's the Wilcox Street project. And then there's the Old Channel Trail Pedestrian Bridge project. Um, there also is uh, about $20,000 that's in local streets for just ongoing sidewalk <coughs> projects. So this might be a partial section replacement, um, taking out trip hazards, etc. So just kind of having that line item in there. The subcommittee has not finalized which local street uh, sidewalks to work on, but um, we do have an appropriation for that. 
Uh, just so again, just some kind of visuals here. So Old Channel Trail, this is Wilcox Street, so Wilcox all the way through to Cook will take place this fall. And then the sidewalk currently proposing and looking at placing that along the north section of Wilcox. So then it would tie the sidewalk on Old Channel Trail to the newer sidewalk on Cook Street. So create another connecting corridor there. This is kind of, so this is the Old Channel Trail pedestrian bridge, which is failing fairly quickly. Bridge comes out, uh, it's re-sloped, sidewalk goes in, and then at some point, some sort of kind of bump out uh, deck area from that, that kind of acts as a seating location. So yeah, I think you said at one time you needed be, uh, some permits to do that. Yep. Are those in place? Those aren't in place, but we're waiting for the permits to come back. Yeah. Yeah, because we have to extend the culvert and then reslope that, it affects the floodplain and creep itself. Um, I threw this one in there, and it doesn't really matter that you can barely see the numbers. This is White Lake Area Building Inspection. This is a fairly tough one to budget for because it's entirely dependent on which permits or how many permits are pulled. So we really have to estimate based on what's happening in the current market for are we going to get, have new home builds, is it going to be much more repair and maintenance work, what types of activities. So all of those determine kind of what to budget for the following year. So usually every time we do a budget amendment uh, with the council, this is one changes because it's constant fluctuation. So as you have more homes being built, you have more revenue and thus more appropriations because we are paying them those inspectors. Um. <coughs> Other questions? I'll keep plugging along here. Water fund appropriation highlights. Uh, so this is 591 within your budget. So continue to work on lead and copper service line replacement. Uh, currently proposing 18 service lines this next year, about $46,000 to do those lines. There you see the next one, the Eagle Drinking Water Assessment Management Grant. There's that number again, 225600 So that's the money coming in and then money going out as an appropriation. Uh, well number five, variable frequency drive replacement and then a piping redo, about 9000 Stanton Water Tower, Inspect and Clean, another 7,500. Capital outlay for some miscellaneous meters and meter reading units, MXUs, 18,500. And then some hydrant replacements, so $12,000. So a lot of our work last year for the lead and copper service line replacement, again, kind of put us ahead of schedule, but we are still kind of picking away at those. Um, so these would be the major appropriations for the water fund in the next year. The equipment fund, this one is a little bit goofy because we're still waiting for pickup truck replacements. Um, so for next year as far as equipment, some kind of some upgrades for those pickups coming in, but also some attachments. So you can see in 640, 443, so a broom head for the leaf vac, and then some miscellaneous pickup truck components for those new trucks, topper, deck box, toolboxes, lights, etc. So those appropriation of 10,850. Um, in the next one, 64901, so a broom attachment for the new John Deere, which we appropriated this last year. And then also front plow and back leg for one of the pickup trucks that comes, um, will hope to come in um, in the next fiscal year. So this uh, is a reminder, this is kind of goofed um, the equipment fund up a little bit because in uh, 3-6 uh, this year, um, council approved replacement of three trucks, so two of them at three quarter ton and one at a half ton. Uh, totaling 154500 so we know that they're not going to come in before this fiscal year. In fact, we were having trouble to even place those orders, so we're still working through that. Um, so we're moving that whole budget line item 
the next fiscal year. So it doesn't need to be approved again as individual items. It's just approved as far as moving it forward within the budget. So won't hit this fiscal year, it will hit next fiscal year. So the, the number value does not change. A couple other of the enterprise funds. So these are the funds that are supposed to be self-sustaining unless there's major projects. So one of those being the launch rent fund, 501901. Again, the fish cleaning station being the focus for this next fiscal year. So that's a redo of the one end of the building and then putting in a brand new grinder. So appropriating 133,000 for that project. And then the campground, so this was coming out of the solar subcommittee. If you remember, we had possibly three for this upcoming year and then proposing just kind of one for the campground weather vane solar project and then finalizing the trailhead bathroom parking lot project. So this one is in the current fiscal year, but we know that there'll be an outlay in the next fiscal year because it's in delay until Whitehall Products begins their project. So it's kind of sitting out there. Um, so those would be, again, hitting enterprise funds. It doesn't affect the general fund both the launch ramp and then the campground. Just a couple more slides here. So debt obligations. So continue to track our kind of long-term debt. So we have just a few now. So we do have the uh, front, front end loader, which is a loan, kind of the least to own. So issued in 2019, we basically have a year and a half left. So current balance as of the end of this fiscal year is just over $40,000. So we'll have one more payment this year and then the following fiscal year, we just have about 5,900 and then that's completely paid off. Fire station bonds, so this is the city actually has the bonds, pays those and the fire district pays the city back. I think there was some discussion on paying off of those bonds early, but we still carry those on our books. Um, otherwise, they don't mature until June 30th of 2028. Um, so just an annual obligation that we keep track of. And then the biggest one is the USDA Rural Water System Loan. Um, it's a four-year loan. It's a big number, but um, we continue to allocate and appropriate for that. So. Again, that's one of those things when you look at both the fund balance as well as the cash fund for water, you need to make sure that your planning is kind of out and far enough. So not only for the current fiscal year, you also have to have sufficient reserve for the next fiscal year. In reality, you need to make sure that you can cash flow it for the entire life of the bond. The last item that I have and then can answer specific questions, um, new fees, or fee increases, so no proposed changes for the fee schedule this next fiscal year. Um, water and sewer rates will go up. This was part of that approval in February, um, that ordinance number 302. This was after the revive, not the revive, all these things, the rate study um, that was put together. Again, there is no sewer rate increases, um, so that stays the same. And then there is an average of 2.5% for water rate increases. So pretty minimum considering that all the projects and activities that are going on. Um, those were all already approved again back in February, so don't need additional approvals and no other changes. Questions on all of that exciting information? Students know that they have a uh, multiple choice <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll have somebody at the door to hand those out. <laughs> so what, what will happen next, again, this is not the final, this is kind of the draft for the work section, is so for the next meeting, um, that millage sheet will be kind of finalized through a resolution, the millage rate, then an approval resolution for the budget itself. We'll take any comments. Uh, from this evening, we integrated it into a final document that includes a lot of that information covered. Um, some narrative summary at the front end, as well as um, let's see if I can find an example here for each fund. It kind of shows the 
fund balance history, where it goes, and then we started integrating where the cash balance is on those. So that's all put together, then that becomes the document that becomes the public document for review, because at the actual, at the next meeting is the actual hearing for the budget, um, based on what's integrated into this document. Comments, questions, you can see I almost cleared out my entire office with three ring binders for information. <laughs> and I need some questions for information. Yeah. I have a question. At the last meeting, a woman came and did a presentation on the rental ordinance. And I'd like to know if you could talk about that so we can make sure that we are doing what we need to do to stay ahead of it. Yep, so I, um, I think what will happen with that is as this master plan kind of process moves forward and we get, get into that zoning review, it's going to fit right into that different component. Yep. Is right, my fear is writing or working on something right now and integrating it into the ordinance language. As the ordinance changes, it becomes invalid. And if the master plan changes, it becomes invalid. So we do them kind of simultaneous, then it will be easy to integrate. Other questions? What is the timing of that again, the master plan approval and zoning? So at the at the next council meeting, so 19th, right? Um, the draft plan from the Planning Commission comes before the council to approve for release to the public. And then there's 60, 63 days for public review. And then it comes back to Planning Commission for final comments and adoption. And then it goes back, then it comes back to council for final adoption based on that recommendation. So it's a little process, but it'll probably be September here. How does that get released for public review? So, um, McKenna does both, a, we have to do a public notice, so in the paper itself, um, goes on our website, they actually, there's um, specific municipalities, so all our neighboring municipalities get noticed that they can receive a copy. Um, goes on the state that it's up for review, so there's different avenues to meet the Michigan Zoning and Neighborhood Law. Is that something that's put on a digital sign? Yeah. Yep. They did the survey that uh, you were given a copy of. Yes. Uh, that survey went to other places other than just money, do I take it? Yes. Some of the comments that are in there. Yep. So what they, because they did the actual mailing through post office direct, so anybody that had a 49437 zip code, um, sometimes it, if it only had two residents that were within the city, but the other mail route was outside, everybody outside got it. So it had to have, that was kind of a way. So I think it mailed out to about 450 people outside of the city. Looking at some of the comments that were made, um, I'm not sure why we would consider uh, in our planning, what people outside the city had to say, I guess, uh, and I don't have the copy with me, so I had someone highlight it that I, I thought were ridiculous. And yeah, there were some comments on Fruitvale Road and some things out there. Yeah, taking care of things five, six miles away. Yep. Any other questions for Jeff? Moving on to number six on the agenda is public comment. This is open public comment. No action will be taken. Please limit your comments to three minutes and come up and use the microphone. If you'd like to make comments, let me know. Seven on the agenda. The agenda is a motion to adjourn. John, yes. I'm sorry. Oh, good. Um, I'm not going to be able to be here on the 19th. Uh, my kids and grandkids bought me something for my 70th birthday coming up, so um, 
I understand that there's a possibility that there's going to be a vote on the social district on the 19th. Um, I have a couple of, I'm not against the social district. I voted in favor of it before. Um, however, I have some concerns that um, I would like the rest of the council to consider at least when they're voting, if they vote on it when I'm not here. Um, number one, um, it was my understanding that, and it was clarified in a meeting that we had here when I asked about uh, whether we would continue with the social district if all four um, establishments did not come in. And it's my understanding that um, Jimmy's is not in at this time. Um, I think uh, we need to look at that closely because I think there's gonna be a problem if uh, we approve opening a social district um, and then the bar that's in the middle of it is not has decided not to participate i think it's going to be a problem for our police department and i think it's going to be a problem for the other establishments trying to um, make sure that uh, the rules are followed and um, i just my understanding when we voted on this before and we talked about this was that if all four didn't come in that was uh, it was not going to be approved and um, the other the other uh, thing that i wanted to bring up and i missed this apparently when we voted on it and um, is the wording of the city shall establish the opening date of the social district upon completion of certain construction activities um, I'm concerned because of the fact that they still are, are not finished with the construction. They have windows and, and a lot of things to do. Uh, it's my understanding that if the social district is approved that they are not going to be working on that stuff when the, when the um, district is open. But um, I didn't, and I guess it's on me, I didn't catch that one word, certain construction. I thought I was voting, approving this, um, that the construction was going to be completed. And um, I, again, I'm not uh, saying that I'm against the district, but I'm concerned about health and safety if we are opening the district and they're working uh, during the day two to three stories up and uh, whether it's going to be safe for people to be in the alleyway and so on. And, and uh, uh, just have some concerns about that. And I, if, if it comes up, I would, would ask the council members to consider those things uh, when they're voting. Oh, thank you. So again, number seven is a motion to adjourn. So support. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Meeting is adjourned.